from Berlin, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Hi, welcome to theCUBE. We're uh, separating the signal from the noise and tuning into the trends in data and analytics here at DataWorks Summit 2018 in Berlin, Germany. Um, this is the sixth year, I believe, that DataWorks has been held um, in, in Europe. Uh, last year, I believe it was at Munich, now it's in Berlin. Um, it's a great show. Uh, the host is, uh, is Hortonworks, and uh, our first interviewee today is, uh, is Scott Now, who is the Chief Technology Officer of, of Hortonworks. Of course, Hortonworks got established themselves about ooh, seven years ago as one of the up-and-coming startups commercializing a, a then brand new technology called Hadoop and MapReduce. They've moved well beyond that in terms of their go-to-market strategy, their product portfolio, their partnerships. So Scott, this morning, and it's great to have you. How are you doing? Glad to be back and good to see you. It's been a while. You know, yes, I mean, you're an industry veteran. Uh, we've both been around the block uh, a few times, but I remember you years ago, uh, you were with Teradata and I was at another analyst firm. And uh, you know, you're with Hortonworks, and Hortonworks is really on a roll. I know you're not Rob Bearden, so I'm not going to go into the financials, but your financials look pretty good, your latest. You're growing, your deal sizes are growing, your uh, customer base is uh, continuing to deepen, so you guys are on a roll. So we're here in Europe, and we're here in Berlin in particular. It's, you know, it's five weeks, you did the keynote this, this morning, it's five weeks until GDPR. The, uh, the sort of Damocles, the GDPR sort of Damocles, it's not just affecting European-based companies, but it's affecting North American companies and others who do business in Europe. So your keynote this morning, your, your core theme was that um, your, uh, if you're an enterprise, uh, your business strategy is, equ is equated with your cloud strategy now, is really equated with your data strategy. And you got to a lot of that, it was a really good discussion. And where GDPR uh, comes into the picture is the fact that you know, protecting data, personal data of your customers, is absolutely important. In fact, it's, it's imperative and mandatory, and will be in five weeks, mm -hmm. uh, or you'll face a significant penalty if you're not managing that data and providing customers with the right to have it erased or the right you know, to withdraw consent to have it profiled and so forth. So enterprises, all over the world, especially in Europe, are getting racing as fast as they can to get compliant with GDPR by the May 25th deadline. So, one of the things you discussed this morning, um, there was a, you had an announcement overnight uh, that Hortonworks has released a new solution and technical preview called the Data Steward Studio, and I'm wondering if you can tie that announcement to GDPR. It seemed like data stewardship uh, would have a strong uh, value for your customers. Well, yeah, there's definitely a big tie-in, and you know, GDPR is certainly creating a milestone, kind of a trigger for people to really think about their data assets. And it's, but it's certainly even larger than that because when you even think about driving a digitization of a business, driving new business models, and connecting data and finding new use cases, it's all about finding the data you have, understanding what it is, where it came from what's the lineage of it, who had access to it, what did they do to it. These are all governance kinds of things which are also now mandated by laws like GDPR. And so it's all really coming together in the context of this, the new modern data architecture era that we live in where a lot of data that we have access to we didn't create. And so it was created outside the firewall by a device, by some application running with some customer. And so interpret, capturing and interpreting and governing that data is very different than taking derivative transactions from an ERP system, which were already adjudicated and understood, uh, and governing that kind of, of a data structure. And so this is, a, this is a need that's driven from many different perspectives. It's driven from the new architecture, the way IoT devices are connecting and just creating a data bomb, that's one thing. It's driven by business use cases of saying just where, what are the assets that I have access to and how can I try to determine patterns between those assets where I didn't even create some of them. So how do I adjudicate Discovering that? Discovering and cataloging your data Discovering assets. it, cataloging it, actually even you know, 
when I even think about uh, you know data, just think the files on my laptop, right, that I created, and I don't remember what half of them are, right? So, creating the metadata, creating that trail of breadcrumbs that lets you kind of piece together what's there, what's the relevance of it, and how then you might use it for some correlation. And then you get in, obviously, to the regulatory piece that says, sure, if I am an EU customer and I ask to be forgotten, the only way that you can guarantee to forget me is to know where all of my data is. If you remember that they're your, you are your, they are your customer in the first place and you know where all that data right. is, you're even aware that it exists, that's the first and foremost thing for an enterprise to be able to assess their degree of exposure to GDPR. So, so right, so it, it's like a whole new use case that's a microcosm of all of these really big things that are going on. And, and so what we've been trying to do is really leverage our expertise in metadata management using the Apache Atlas project. Of course- You and IBM have done some major work We work, work with there, IBM yeah. and the community on Apache Atlas. You know, metadata tagging is uh, not the most interesting topic for some people, but in the context that I just described, it's kind of important. And so I think one of the areas where we can really add value for the industry is leveraging our lowest common denominator, open source, open community kind of development to really create a standard infrastructure, a standard open infrastructure for metadata tagging into which all of these use cases can now plug, whether it's I want to discover data and create metadata about the data based on patterns that I see in the data, or I've inherited data and I want to ensure that the metadata stay with that data through its life cycle so that I can guarantee the lineage of the data and be compliant with GP GDPR. And in fact, tomorrow we will have Mandy Chessel from IBM, uh, uh, Key Hortonworks partner, discussing yeah. the open metadata framework you're describing. And that, and and that was part doing. of this morning's keynote flow yeah. as well, so it all really flowed nicely together. Anyway, it, it is really a perfect storm. So what we've done is we've said, let's leverage this lowest common denominator standard metadata tagging Apache Atlas and up-level it and not have it be part of a cluster, but actually have it be a cloud service that can be enforced across multiple data stores, whether they're in the cloud or whether they're on-prem. And That's this, the Data Steward Studio. That's the, well, that Data Plane and Data Steward Studio yes. really yeah. enable those things to come together. So the Data Steward Studio is the second is a, like service under the, data, the Hortonworks yeah. Data Plane service. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, so the whole idea is to be able to tie those things together and when you think about it in today's hybrid world, and this is where I really started, where your data strategy is your cloud strategy, they can't be separate, because if they're separate, just think about what would happen. All right, so I've copied a bunch of data out to the cloud. All memory of any lineage is gone. Or I've got to go set up manually another set of lineage that may not be the same as the lineage it came with. And so being able to provide that common service across footprint, whether it's multiple data centers, whether it's multiple clouds or both, is a really huge value because now you can sit back and through that single pane, see all of your data assets and understand how they interact. That obviously has uh, the um, ability then to provide value like with Data Steward Studio to discover assets, maybe to, to discover assets and discover duplicate assets where, hey, I can save some money if I get rid of this cloud instance because it's over here already. Uh, or to be compliant and say, yeah, I've got these assets here, here, and here. I am now compelled to do whatever, delete, protect, encrypt, I can now go do that and keep a record through the metadata that I did it. Yes, in fact, you know, that is very much at the heart of compliance. You got to know what assets there are out there. And so it seems to me that Hortonworks is increasingly, you know, the H word rarely comes up these days. Not H, Hortonworks, no, no, you're talking H, about Hadoop. Hadoop yeah. rarely comes up these days when the industry talks about you guys it's known that's your core, that's your base, that's where you, 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 you know, HDP and so forth, great product, great distro. In fact, um, you, in your partnership with, with IBM, uh, a year or more ago, I think it was IBM standardized on HDP as their, in, in, in lieu of their, their, their distro, because it's so well established, so mature. Um, but, but going forward, um, you guys in many ways, Hortonworks, you are, you've positioned yourselves now, Wikibon sees you as being the premier solution provider of um, big data governance solutions, specifically focused on you know, multi-cloud, on structured data and so forth. And uh, so the announcement uh, to, uh, today of the Data Steward Studio very much builds on that capability you already have, have there. 
So, um, you know, going forward, um, can you give us a sense for your roadmap in terms of building our data plane service? Um, because this is the second of the services under the data plane umbrella. Give us a sense for how you'll continue to deepen your governance portfolio uh, in, the in data plane. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> really the way to think about it, there, there are a couple of things that you touched on that are, I think, really critical um, for, certainly for me and for us at Hortonworks to continue to repeat just to make sure the message got there. Number one, Hadoop is definitely at the core of what we've done and was kind of the secret sauce some very different stuff in the technology, also the fact that it's open source and community, all those kinds of things, but that really created a foundation that allowed us to build the whole beginning of big data, data management. Yeah. Right, and we added and expanded to the traditional Hadoop stack by adding data in motion. And so what we've done NiFi, is- NiFi, I believe, you made a major NiFi, investment. Yeah, so yeah, we made a large investment in Apache NiFi, as well as uh, Storm and Kafka as kind of a group of technologies. Yes. And the whole idea behind doing that was to expand our footprint so that we would uh, enable our customers to manage their data through its entire life cycle from being created at the edge all the way through streaming technologies to landing to analytics and then even analytics being pushed back out to the edge. So it's really about having that common management infrastructure for the life cycle of all the data, including Hadoop and many other things. And then in that, obviously, as we discussed, whether it be regulation, whether it be, frankly, feature functionality, there's an opportunity to up-level those services from, a, from an overall security and governance perspective. And just like Hadoop kind of upended traditional thinking, and what I mean by that, it was not the economics of it specifically, but just the fact that you could land data without describing it, right? That, that seemed so unimportant at one time, and now it's like the key thing that drives the difference. Think about sensors that are sending in data that reconfigure firmware, and that those streams change. Being able to acquire data and then assess the data is a big deal. Uh, so the same thing applies then to how we apply governance, right? And I said this morning, you know, traditional governance was, hey, I started as an employee, I have access to this file, this file, this file, and nothing else. So I don't know what else is out there, I only have access to what my job title describes, and that's traditional data governance. In the new world, that doesn't work. Data scientists need access to all of the data now. I, that doesn't mean we need to give away PII, right? We can encrypt it, we can tokenize it, but we keep referential integrity. We keep the integrity of the original structures, and those who have a need to actually see the PII can get the token and see the PII. But it's governance kind of thought inversely, uh, you know, as that's been thought about for 30 years. It's so great you've worked governance into an, uh, an increasingly streaming, real-time, uh, uh, in-motion data environment. Scott, this has been great. Uh, it's been great to have you on theCUBE. You're an alum of theCUBE. I think we've had you at least two or three times over the last few years. It feels years. like 35. No, uh, yeah, it, it, you've <laughs> been great. So we are here at DataWorks Summit in Berlin.